Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and I'm inviting you to join me for a casual conversation this morning about the most budget-friendly cards available in the Dustmorn House of Horror. The cards that are going to make for a more enjoyable and productive season. But before we get into all that, this season, Duskmorn is focused on that horror genre and all of those fears that us 1-1 one, one human tokens tend to share. But you know what I really find horrifying? Only one-third of the viewers that regularly watch my content have subscribed to the channel. So come on guys, take a moment, sub to the channel, support the content, and be sure to check your notification settings so you never miss out on a thing. Now, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, right. Hey guys, as we get started with this budget perspective, let me get you to lean in real close. I, I got a secret for you. It turns out higher rarity cards are good. Okay, okay, I, I admit that's not much of a secret. And that's exactly why I'm not going to spend our time talking about all the good rares and mythics. Uh, there are plenty of other content creators willing to do that. And since I know that a budget player following our plan is only about 70% likely to have any given rare and only about 50% likely to have any given mythic, with the actual playset statistics going even further down than that very rapidly, I'm just not going to spend our time that way. Instead, I'm going to turn our magnifying glass towards those commons and uncommons because, you know, those are cards you're going to have and I want you to be able to get the most bang for your buck. All right, so now that I've set the expectation that we're not really going to talk about rares, there are, in fact, more rares in this set worthy of budget discussion than usual. First up, we've got Ghost Vacuum, and the ability to pay just one mana for an artifact that allows you to exile target cre or excuse me, any target card from a graveyard is really worth some conversation. Whether you are foiling your opponent's Graveyard Matter strategy or pushing your own Insidious Roots deck, this card is poised to do a lot of work for you. Uh, not to mention, if Graveyard Matters really becomes prevalent in Standard, uh, this card is going to be a must-have. The added ability to pay six and sack this in the late game to create a bunch of 1-1 Spirit Creature tokens that share any ETB abilities with the exiled cards is really just gravy. Next up, we've got one really built for the Johnny Combo players out there, a two mana legendary artifact creature toy. Uh, he's a 2-2. He's Marvin the Murderous Mimic and has all activated abilities of creatures you control that don't have the same name as this creature. Uh, basically, it just picks up all of your activated abilities. So this really has some broken combo potential, particularly in older builds and things like that. And I think Marvin is probably going to be seen a lot in the 99 or 59 of a lot of Brawl decks here over the next two or three years, if not beyond. And last up, we've got what has become kind of a recurring theme, a really good potential mana fixer land. Uh, this is a Volgas Lair, an enchantment land that has hexproof. When it enters, it does so tapped, and you choose a color, and you can tap it for one mana of the chosen color. Uh, particularly good here for us budget players because, of course, this allows us to do mana fixing without getting tied down to specific color combinations. And this is also particularly good for a splash of a second or even third color uh, without really having to dedicate a lot of our wild card space to rare dual lands. Now, what do you say we flip the script and talk about some things that maybe as budget players we don't want or need to spend resources on? 
Uh, first up at Rare, Leyline of the Void is a reprint on Arena. It has been made available as recently as the Wilds of Aldrin bonus sheet, uh, as well as M20. All versions are rares and each bring a very different art. So uh, be sure to know what your options are before you commit any wild cards for sure. At lower rarity, we've got a bit more to talk about, including uh, Ethereal Armor and Scorching Dragonfire, as well as a Murder and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which have been reprinted on Arena to the point of ridiculousness now. Uh, I really wish they'd develop similar cards that would at least be something new for our collection. When it comes to Uncommon Commanders, I am very pleased to see that we did not get the same tired concept of 10 two-color signpost commanders and instead got just a couple of uncommon legendary creatures. Uh, first off, we've got uh, Norin, uh, not the wary, the swift survivalist. And I'll be honest, I don't think this is going to be a commander anytime soon. And I'll be frank, I think it will be someone far more creative than me to even make use of this in the 5999 of a Brawl deck. However, Altenac Thrice Called is a beyond interesting 7 mana 9 9 legendary insect beast with trample. Uh, whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you get to draw a card. So they uh, essentially two for one themselves anytime they actually uh, target this with removal. And uh, for two mana, you can discard it, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped. Uh, pretty nice. I have to be honest though, I think seven mana feels like an awful lot for a commander, even in a mono green potentially ramp deck. And when you factor in the two mana sorcery, say its name, uh, I think this card maybe has more potential for 60 card constructed applications. Uh, I really wish there was uh, some form of text saying that you could have any number of say its name in a deck or perhaps even balance it by saying uh, if you have more than four copies of say its name, you can only have one copy of Altenac. Last up and potentially most interesting, we've got Annabelle. I mean, Arabella, the abandoned doll. Uh, this just really wants us to push that uh, less than two power matters. We've got a lot of that in our starter collection. This set brings even more of that, although to a different um, white-based color pair. Uh, I think this has a lot of potential for Brawl applications. And while we don't know exactly what Rares Jump In might bring to us as budget commander potentials, this is one that I really hope I get an opportunity to build around this season. And there's even more to talk about when we get to the topic of heavy hitting uncommon singles. For instance, there are two white uncommons that are really begging to be built around in these set mechanics. Uh, the first being Optimistic Stranger with the Eerie mechanic that, uh, well, really is bringing Enchantress back as though it were Justin Timberlake. And in fact, if this card seems familiar, it's because it's doing its very best as an off-color impression of Generous Visitor, which just rotated out of standard and took the Enchantress deck with it. But boy, is it going to be back with this set. Next up, we've got Orphans of the Wheat, which I'm sure has nothing to do with the movie Children of the Corn, uh, but does have everything to do with enabling the survivor mechanic, because whenever this card attacks, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Orphans of the Wheat gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature tapped this way. So it's a fantastic way to tap down your survival creatures as many of them as you want without risking them in the red zone themselves. Honestly, I'm not sure which one of these is going to have more impact on a budget deck, but I wouldn't be surprised to see both of these inspiring, empowering decks of their own. And we've got another uncommon doing a great impression and providing value for us budget players. 
Uh, Cursed Windbreaker is not exactly a copy of Cryptic Coat, but it's pretty darn close and uh, at a much lower rarity, which can be very nice for us trying to put together those budget decks and conserve our rare wild cards. Yet another card hitting way above its uncommon weight is Sheltered by Ghosts, a two mana enchantment aura that not only brings an O-ring effect with it, but gives the enchanted creature plus one plus zero, lifelink, and ward two. Uh, get used to seeing this in 60 card constructed. There are a couple of uncommon signposts that um, really are threatening to break out of not only a limited greatness, but uh, probably make a name for themselves in 60 card constructed as well. Uh, the first being the Brood Spinner. Uh, first off, this is a two mana, two, three spider creature with reach. And we could just stop there. The card is already good enough. Uh, from there, it gets an ETB with Surveil 2, and in addition has a late game ability to sacrifice itself and create a theoretical bunch of 1-1 black-green insect creature tokens with flying. Um, I don't know how much more pushed an uncommon signpost could be, uh, but I really am looking forward to uh, playing around with this card. Uh, the other is Oblivious Bookworm, another 2 mana, 2-3, two, so pretty good, just right there. Um, it also has uh, an instep trigger to draw a card. Uh, if you haven't placed a face-down permanent or turned a face-down up that turn, you then have to discard a card. Uh, but, of course, if you've done any of those morph-style things, you just draw the card. And, uh, well, that has a lot of potential, uh, not only in the morph-style deck, but really any Simic build. And the last card for this section is, of course, Pyroclasm, which I really don't feel like I need to say a whole lot about. Uh, but just in case you haven't heard, this card is really going to change... Uh, standard, the ability to deal two damage to every creature for two mana is, uh, well, nothing to be laughed at. And as budget players, we are maybe going to have to shy away from some of those uh, go wide, token, aggro, boros, mono red decks uh, a little bit, depending upon how much this gets adopted into best of one play. So there it is, guys. Those are my thoughts on the mostly uncommons from this set that I think we all need to be paying attention to as budget players. Uh, give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, what do you think I missed? Am I off on anything here? And of course, be on the lookout this coming Monday for my thoughts on the breakout commons of the set just in time for all you MTGO players to get online and get them cheap on release Tuesday. And before we go, while every member of this community is important to me, I just wanted to take a moment and give a shout out to those patrons providing financial support and keeping the stronghold from being a complete financial black hole. And of course, let me leave you with some suggestions for your next step here on the channel.